Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 14 in our incredible tutorial series where you are teaching the robots who's boss. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice enormous mug of iced coffee. That would be strong black coffee poured over ice no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. I will also need you to get out your gear, get out your most excellent Elegoo Smart Car version 3.0 kit, and I need you to get ready to learn some cool new stuff. What we are going to learn today is we are going to learn how to control the smart car from the Bluetooth module. Okay, and so I will need you to get out your Bluetooth module. It is in your kit, in your little box of goodies. You should be able to dig that out if you haven't lost it already because I know it's been some time that you've been playing with this thing but you need to get out your Bluetooth module and we're gonna learn how to control the robot from this module but before we do that we need to kind of think about what we've learned in the first 13 lessons kind of where we've come from where we are and where we're going now in the first 13 lessons you have learned a lot of really really good and really cool stuff but what you've identified probably is two things that are less than perfect about the Elegoo kit and it's not that it's not a good kit it is just the nature of how we do things with low-end robotics and that is the first is that you're probably noticing I know I know that you're noticing because I read your comments you guys have noticed that it's hard to make the car drive straight some of you guys are veering to the left and some of you guys are veering to the right and uh, in reading the comments I can see that you guys have identified probably the two main reasons that the car veers to the left or right some of you probably took your automotive knowledge of real cars and applied it to the smart car and recognize it will only drive perfectly straight if the wheels are perfectly aligned what is the problem it is impossible to get the wheels perfectly aligned and so you're sitting there trying to get better alignment on those motor mounts to lead to straighter uh, operation of the car okay so how it drives the straightness of how it drives depends on how well the wheels are, are aligned Another problem that you're running into is you spend a lot of time to get them as perfectly aligned as possible. You go out, you drive the car around, and those little nuts and bolts become loose, and you lose your alignment. I've seen some people are talking about maybe using Loctite on the bolt so that you get it aligned. You tighten it down, <clears throat> and then you use some Loctite. Other people have talked about maybe getting some lock washers so that once you get it aligned, it'll stay aligned. And those are all good ideas, but just understand, ev even with that, once you get it aligned, it's not going to stay perfectly aligned. The other problem that some of you guys are seeing is, is that if you get any slippage in a tire at all, like if you lose traction as you're speeding up or slowing down, that will cause it to veer off course okay so that's just the nature of trying to operate a robot in the open loop mode and as I was a practicing engineer your best friend as an engineer is closed loop control and that is where you don't just say drive straight but you're constantly monitoring where you're driving and making little mid course corrections and really if you think that's how you drive a real car it is a closed loop feedback uh, control system you don't just point the car down the road and then fold your hands and close your eyes. No, you're constantly looking and you say, oh, I'm getting a little bit too far this way, correct this way. Now I'm getting a little bit too far this way and correct that way. You are the sensor and the actuator of an, of an, of an active closed loop control system that keeps your real car on the highway. And just in an engineering sense, you don't have a person in there, but what you would do is you would have a sensor, like I wanna go 13 degrees from north, Okay, you would say, I want to go 13 degrees from north, but then you would constantly monitor. And if you're at 15 degrees, you correct. If you're at 11 degrees, you correct the other way. And so you use sensors and actuators to get the desired uh, endpoint. In effect, you, you have a target 
you have an actual, the difference between the target and the actual is the error. And then you use the control system to drive the error to zero. Now, we haven't done this in this series of lessons, but on my channel, there's two places that we've used closed loop control. One is on that self-leveling platform where we have an inertial measurement unit. And as you tilt something, it corrects itself to keep it flat. OK, we used a PID controller on that. And then on our uh, Jetson Nano series where we were controlling the position of a camera with a pan tilt uh, servo system, that system was using closed loop control. But we haven't used closed loop control on the smart car yet because I can't teach you closed loop control until you really understand open loop control and until you really have the open loop, uh, you know, uh, understand what the problems are with open loop control and just are basically controlling the motors and communicating with the cars and all that sort of stuff. So if there is interest at some point in the future when we ma after we master some of the basics, maybe we could think about putting like a BNO 055 on here and then using it as a compass and then use the compass where we would send it a direction we want to go. And then that compass would be part of a feedback system to keep it going in that direction. Only if there is interest, I will do that at some point. OK, the second thing, man, this is way too much talking, way too much talking. But the second issue is that you have found is that the little infrared control, the little infrared remote control doesn't work as well as you would like it to. And that is because that operates based on photons. Now, photons are light. You don't see a beam of light coming out of the little remote control because it, the photons that are used are infrared in that device. They're non-visible. They're photons, but they're a little bit below what you can actually see. Wavelengths a little bit longer than what you can see with your eye but you are shooting out photons and what does that mean that means that when like imagine kind of like a really weak flashlight you're sending a signal over a really weak flashlight with the smart car you can probably get about oh I would say about eight or ten feet and then it starts operating pretty unreliably you're not getting clean signals but if you go like six feet and then you turn the car around then it loses the signal because the signal with photons is line of sight the little emitter and the little detector have to be pointing towards each other. When you get out there and turn the car around, now the car is blocking the photons and you lose connection. So we need a better way to communicate with the car. So instead of photons, what we want to use is radio waves. And the easiest way for us to use radio waves is Bluetooth. And Bluetooth is based on radio waves. And so that will allow us to get much, much cleaner control and much, much cleaner connection with the smart car. OK. So let's talk about one more thing and then I'll shut up and start coding and start teaching. OK, but the, <clears throat> the thing that we have to see is there are some challenges in using this Bluetooth module. And that is the Bluetooth operates over UART. What is UART on the Arduino? Well, it's several things. It is, if you look at the Arduino, I think pin 0 and 1 or 1 and 2 are labeled TX and RX. UART is TX and RX. So when you plug this Bluetooth module in, you are connecting to those TX and RX pins. What is the problem? The problem is the USB cable, right? The USB cable that we use Where's my USB cable? The USB cable that we use to download the programs to the Arduino also use UART. They also use TX and RX. So once you plug the Bluetooth module into the smart car, you lock up the UART. You lock up the TX RX and you can't download a program. All right. So when you want to download the program, you have to take the Bluetooth module out. When you want to Bluetooth, you have to unplug the, the, uh, the uh, USB cable. So it's one or the other. And what you find is you begin to kind of trip over yourself when you're doing this. It also becomes a little harder to debug programs because what also uses UART or TXRX, your serial monitor. And so normally the way that we debug programs 
program says normally the way that we would debug a program would be that we would uh, put print statements in but if we have the Bluetooth module on there we can't have the serial monitor open so we can't debug with the serial monitor so the debugging can become a little more challenging we got to be a little bit more careful in doing our code let me do a quick little Windows management here if you will give me just a second I have a little issue in the control room okay that looks good all right so we're back uh, back to where I need to be so let's get ready to learn some cool new stuff and so I will come to uh, this view I do believe and uh, what we are going to do here is we are going to get ready to hook this thing up but I think uh, Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and let's get this thing plugged in. And so I'm going to try to get a view and I will focus here so you can see it and show you how to plug this thing in. I think I'll just go back to the full screen and I will come out over here out of your way like this. So if you look at the top of the smart car, you can see there's this one slot that we're not using. That is the Bluetooth slot. And if you look, and if you look it's actually labeled there. Uh, it actually says Bluetooth. Okay. Now what you're going to want to do is I will always like to do this unpowered. So I'm turning the car off, making sure that it's turned off. And there's only one direction this can go in because it has those little keyed slots and so you can see it's kind of overhanging backwards on the board and you want to very deliberately get that plugged in very good okay so that is plugged in now and we should be ready to look at the Bluetooth all right so what we are going to need to do now is we are going to need to we are going to need to have a way that we can talk to the smart car and we will do that with our smartphone and so I will be showing you how to do this with an iPhone but it should be the same it should really be the same on an Android it's just instead of going to the uh, instead of going to the uh, the uh, Apple Store you would be going to the Android Store or to the Google Store or whatever you call it but it should really be identical other than that and so I'm gonna come over here and I am going to go to the App Store and when I get to the App Store I am going to need to search on Elegoo E L E G O I didn't do that right Elegoo okay and then what you can see is it is the Elegoo BLE for Bluetooth so we want to search on that and then you see it comes up like this it looks like a little picture of the Elegoo smart car and it says Elegoo BLE tool and we are going to download that it goes pretty fast so I'll just have a sip of coffee as it is downloading And we will be up and running here in no time. Okay, so it is downloaded, and I will now just click the open. And it says, would you like to allow the Elegoo BLE tool to use your Bluetooth? I have a feeling that that's pretty important to say okay, because if we don't let it use the Bluetooth module, it's not going to be able to talk to the smart car. Now, it's just saying that if the manual doesn't match the software, go download a new manual, but we don't use no lousy, stinking manual. We figure this stuff out on our own. The first thing is you've got to choose the platform, right? There's several things that Elegoo has. What you want, of course, is the smart robot car, so we will click there. Again, it gives us the warning the manual might not be up to date, and so to up to date it. Now you have several different options. What I got to warn you is, is that these first few are using CAN programs that Elegoo wrote. If you use those, it just turns the smart car into a toy. You're just pressing buttons and using a remote control. We're not here to play with toys. We're here to learn how to be engineers, and so therefore we are not going to use the rocker control and we are not going to use the program control we are going to use the DIY control and when it comes up here to DIY control 
it has a screen that looks like this, okay? And there is nothing there. There is nothing there because we are the programmers and we're going to make this do what we want it to do. Now, the first thing we're going to see is we're going to see if we can pair this thing, okay? We're going to see if we can pair this thing. So let me see if I can get a little bit better view here. Camera management is always a challenge. And what you can see is there's this little pair button here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the smart car on. Okay, I see a little red light on the control board and I see a little green light on the Arduino board. And so now we are going to try to pair. And so I will hit the little pair button. And you know it is always a shot in the dark whether you are going to be able to pair with Bluetooth. I have never had Bluetooth just work as well as I would like it to. We are going to try to be patient and look at that. It did, uh, it did connect, and so that is absolutely great. That is absolutely great. So we are paired with it. So that is good, and we will move it out. And so now what we are going to do, now what we are going to do is we're going to try to program this thing to send signals to the smart car. And the way you do that is you hold a button down, Okay, and then you come over here, and what am I going to call this button? I'm going to call it four for forward. So I'm going to go F O R. That's going to be my forward button. And what command do I want to send if someone presses the forward button? I'm going to command an F. Okay, I'm going to send an F, and it's going to be a character. All right, and so that is good. We've got four done, and now this one. Can you guess what this one is going to be? This one is going to be back for backwards. Okay. And so what do we want to send? We want to send the character B. Okay, the character B if we hit the backwards button. So that's good. And now can you guess what this one would be? We're going to make that right. And guys, I'm not trying to do something real fancy here. What we are trying to do at this point is, what we are trying to do at this point is we are just trying to get something that talks, all right? And we can get, once we can see that we can talk to the car, we can get fancier later on. Okay, that looks good. And now this one, hold it down, it pops up. This one we want to be left, okay? And then this will be the message L. Okay, have you been able to see that okay? All right, I hope so. So now we have forward, backward, right, and left. And so this is programmed at this point, and we are paired with the smart car. All right, but what is the problem? The problem is, oh, look, and we get a happy little red light. Do you see the hap oops. Do you see the happy little red light that we get? On this is really wanting to tip over. Let me get a little more stable there. Do you see the happy little red light that we get on the Bluetooth module when the pairing occurs? Okay. And so if I come over to the smart if I come over to the smartphone and go back to the Elegoo application, if I break the pairing over here and say disconnect, then the little red light goes off, so we're no longer paired. All right, so what we're going to do now is turn the smart car off, and we are going to take this out, because now we need to program the smart car. So I need to find my USB cable, and we are going to plug it in. as such. And so now we are powered up through the USB cable and we're ready to start coding. So let's see if I can go to a good coding view here. And you cannot quite see that. Let me uh, let me adjust this shot to make sure that you can see. Every, er, let's see, this is the one we want to go to. Okay, you can see that. Okay, so let me just do a little, a little management of the camera. Okay, so that is the Arduino. 
and now I can get over here to the keyboard and we can get ready to go now. If I had someone in the control room, my life would be so much easier. I need a sidekick. You know, guys, I really need a sidekick to work in the control room. Okay, so let's come over here to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. Okay, and what I need you guys to do is I, I don't want to start from scratch. So let's go back to one of the first programs that we wrote where we were actually controlling the car just through the uh, those four. I think we had four functions where we could go forward, backward, left and right. And that was in lesson number five. Let me show you the snazzy little search tool that I added to the website. You can come over here and you can say robotics training lesson five like that and then search on it and look at that it comes up robotics training lesson five we will go there and then here we are on lesson number five we're going to come down and we're going to grab this code to give us a good place to start and you guys took lesson number five so you know all about this now we're going to come here to the arduino window control a to select all and then control V is going to paste that code and yes we've got a turn left function we've got a turn right function we've got a backward function we got a forward function and it looks like forward and backwards just want us to pass it a distance okay so that should be pretty easy so a couple of things now we're going to need to send a command from our smartphone so remember the command is a what a character a char so we need to set up a variable a char variable and i'm just going to call it command okay so that is going to be the command that we send and a char is one character it is not a string uh, yes we have our serial monitor on and so that will allow us to uh, make sure that we can send serial commands and then here we are not going to want to do any of this stuff i'll keep the forward command because we will be giving a forward command but What's the first thing that we've got to do in this program? We have to sit and listen and wait. We have to wait for a command to come from the smartphone. So how will I do that? Well, I want to, and this, hopefully you guys took my Arduino series. This will make sense. What I want to do is I want to just say while, and then while serial.available turns the happy little orange. Okay, while well, serial.available equal equal zero, that means there is no serial data. While there is no serial data, what do I want to do? Absolutely nothing. So I just sit here and loop and loop and loop while I'm waiting for data. Then once I get data, what do I want to do? I want to read it. So I would say CMD is going to be equal to serial dot read now in the past we did read string but the problem is read string wants a string and it wants a line ending we don't have a line ending we're just sending it just a raw naked character so we will do a serial read into command now we got to figure out what to do well what we can do is say if uh, if cmd is equal equal what the character f if the command that we send is equal equal to the character f what do we want to do we want to go forward let's go forward four something like that okay let's go forward four like that and then i want to get rid of this for i want to get rid of this forward 10 here because I'm only going to go forward if I click the F. And I'm just going to not do any more than that right now. Because what is it that we really want to see? We, <laughs> we really want to see if we're talking to the Bluetooth module and can make the car do something. If this works, even though this seems pretty simple, if this works, everything else is going to be easy. Okay. If you look, yes, we do have the USB plugged in. And that powers the boards. And the, and the Bluetooth module is out. So we should be ready to try to download this with a little luck oh denied did I misspell forward what could have possibly gone wrong forward okay not declared in this scoop 
That is perplexing. That looks so right, doesn't it? Forward, forward. This is really strange. Let me see. Edit. Undo. I erase that forward. Do you guys see what I did wrong? Command is serial.read. Sometimes you can have problems earlier on while serial.available. That looks good. The void call. Uh, command has been read. Okay, let's just comment out all of this. And let's just see if we could just do this very, very simple thing. Doesn't like that. Forward was not declared. Okay, you know what I think? I think I have an extra close parenthesis way or close curly way down there. Maybe that added that. Maybe that added that when I put in one of those if statements. Maybe it threw it way down there. I don't like how it closes your brackets for you or closes your curlies for you. And that close curly should be right here. Okay, so now let's look. This closes the void loop. Okay, now I'm pretty sure this is going to work, but let's just try it. And then, yeah, it's going to work. And so now we're going to take our forward 10 out. We had an unmatched curly bracket problem. Now let's take this out. Edit. Comment. Uncomment. Now let's download this. I think it's going to be happy this time. Okay, let me refocus while that is doing its thing. Okay, that looks like a really good focus. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this up, and now I'm going to come over here, and we are going to take a look at this. And now I'm going to hit the 4. Ah, <laughs> forgot to put the Bluetooth module in. So now we are going to unplug the USB. We are going to plug the Bluetooth back in. We're going to plug the Bluetooth back in. And now it is asking me, do I want to connect the device? Yes. And now let's see if we can get paired up again. It seemed to see maybe that that thing had come on, and so let's see if we can pair this thing up again. Okay, it looks like it's paired, all right? And so I've got the happy little red light, and I have the happy little blue icon. And so now I'm kind of running out of hands, but I don't want the car to drive off, so I'm just going to come up here, and I'm going to hit 4. Shazam! Look at that. We are talking Bluetooth. Uh-huh. Boom! That is really exciting. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to unplug the Bluetooth. And I got so excited that I didn't turn the power off in order to do that. It's always good to do the plugging and unplugging unpowered. We're going to come back over here. And now let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can program up some other commands. And so we say if command is F, we're going to go forward by 4. And let's just grab that. Let's grab this if statement like that. And then let's come down. And what we're going to do is we are going to do, uh, if it's R, or did we use, I think we said B for backwards. Then we are going to, what was the backward? It was backward. B-A-C-K-W-A-R-D. Okay. And so that will be good. And then we're going to say if. We're going to copy this. And we need to do a right turn. And so if command is R. Then what was our function? It's turn right. Then And what does turn right want? It wants degrees. And so let's go 180. So we are going to... Uh, if command is uh, R, we are going to turn right 
by 180 degrees. Okay. And then if it is left, if it is left, then what we are going to do is we are going to turn left by 180 degrees. Okay. Turn right, turn left. All right. Now that is going to be ready. We're plugged in. We should be able to download this. That looks good. I think that's good. All right, so now we can unplug the serial monitor. We are now powered off. We are going to put the Bluetooth back in, all the way in. And now we're going to see if we can pair it. Bluetooth disconnected, OK. We are going to come here and see if this thing will pair up for us again. And I will need to turn the car on. All right. Boom. As soon as I turned it on, then it paired up. OK. So let's just see if we get noise when we do this. If it's, uh, let's see if we're getting nominal action here out of this thing with the four buttons. And if it is, then we'll go put it over on the RoboTrack, hopefully. Use the RoboCam. OK. That looks pretty good. So let's go uh, forward. It goes forward. Let's go backwards. Backwards is not working. Let's look at right. Right is not working. Let's look at left. Left is not working. So let's look and see what we did here. That's little L. That looks good. Let's make sure that we were on character. OK. That looks good. What did we do over here on the code side? If command is right, if command is left. OK, we have a coding problem. So while serial.available, that curly matches that. Then we read it. And then if command equal equal F, we go forward 4. Oh, oh, we did another read here. What was that nonsense? I must have copied and pasted too much. Hopefully you guys saw that. Did you see that? Hopefully you saw that. But we were reading it again after that. And so therefore that would keep it from working. So let's plug it back in. OK. Unplug the Bluetooth. Plug this back in. Download it. It looks like it's going to be happy. OK, downloaded. We unplug it. We are unpowered. We are plugging the Bluetooth module back in like that. And now we turn the car on. The car is on. Then we're going to come back over here and try to connect. Oops. All right, let's see if we can connect the Bluetooth with this little red button. OK, kind of got a little, had to back out of the program. So we're going to go back to DIY control, and we're going to try to hit the Bluetooth. Now it is trying to pair, and we will give it a second to try and pair. OK, it looks like it's paired. We go to DIY control. OK, now we are going to try forward. That worked. Boom! Back right and left. Shazam! Did you guys see that? We are controlling this thing. Now you see, if you can do those four commands, you ought to be able to do any command. OK, so now let's see if I can go out there and control this. I hope, I think my little camera is set up. So let's see if this works. Let's go to RoboCam. RoboCam. All right, so let's go out there. And let's see if we can make this thing work. OK, hopefully you can see me. Hopefully you can see the car. Hopefully you can hear me. But I have got this, and I am going to try to go forward. Boom! 
And guys, it nailed it to the inch four. So now let's go back. Boom, it came exactly back to where we wanted it. Now let's go forward. Let's go forward again. Okay, now I don't know if we're gonna, I haven't calibrated it in a while, so I'm not sure about the turns, but I'll go right. Oh, okay, it came all the way back to me. And now forward. Now, did you guys see? Did you guys see that when it turned around and it was eight feet away, it had a good connection because we didn't have that line of sight problem that we have when we are doing things with the photon. So let's try this again. We're gonna go forward, forward, forward. We're like 12 feet away now. Now we're gonna do a left turn, okay? And now we're gonna come back and I'm gonna have to do Okay. Okay, now I think I can come back forward, forward, forward. Okay. And we didn't end up exactly where we started, but you can see that we had kind of the, the problem of not driving perfectly straight. But all right. Okay, guys, I am just incredibly excited about this. I am incredibly excited about this because, right, we had kind of two problems. We had the problem of open loop control not working perfectly, and then we have the problem of, uh, we have the problem of open loop control not working perfectly, and uh, we had the problem of poor signal from our infrared remote, our photon based remote but now with bluetooth man we have got an excellent connection we have an excellent connection and it was just like snappy we never got a bad signal when we were playing around with it so i am just super super duper excited about this so uh let's see that is a really really huge step forward so let's talk about homework for next week i want you guys to go back to and let's see, what was that lesson? I think it was probably lesson number 13. Okay, lesson number 13. And remember what we were doing on lesson number 13. We came in and we sort of had calibrated signals for forward, backwards, left and right, and everything was calibrated up. And we could sort of give it a number, like if we put three on the remote, it would go three forward. If we put seven, it would go seven forward. We could control the speed, we could control the distance, and we could control turning from the infrared remote. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to replicate the functionality of lesson number 13, but I want you to do it with Bluetooth, which will work a lot better. And so that's your homework for next week. And then uh, what we'll do is next week I'll come in and I'll actually show you my, uh, I'll show you my solution. Okay, guys, this has been fun. I'm really excited to get the Bluetooth working. You can see I stumbled a few times of, of you know, getting the thing plugged in or on or off or whatever. So that's just what happens. But you'll get, you'll get used to using Bluetooth and just remember you can't do, you use Bluetooth and the USB cable at the same time. Okay, guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.